Hello friends, Namaskar and welcome to the 12th episode of video series DK's Hull. Next to nitrogen, phosphorus in the form of phosphate and potass are the vital nutrients for crop production. Details about nutrients, their role and losses due to deficiency shall be discussed in the later episodes. However, in this episode, we will concentrate on the roles of phosphate and potass related biofertilizers only. Actual field experience with application of biofertilizers and their benefits are presented at the end of this episode. Commercial phosphate fertilizers are manufactured using rock phosphate. Most of the phosphate fertilizers contain either water soluble or citric acid soluble phosphate or even both. Normally, water soluble phosphate is preferred. However, due to poor solubility at higher pH above 7.5, a large portion of phosphate which is applied in the soil remains unavailable to the plant. Phosphorus is a reactive element, hence exists in the form of complex compound that is phosphate. The phosphorus level in the soil is about 0.05%. The concentration of soluble phosphate in soil solution is usually very low. Normally, in case of poor soil, it is one part in a billion. While in case of good quality soil, that is fertile soil, it is one part per million. About 75 to 90% of applied phosphate fertilizers becomes insoluble, hence unavailable to crops. Among the various phosphatic fertilizers, DAP is the world's most widely used fertilizer. The global demand for DAP is about 30 million, that is 3 crore tons a year. Kindly recall episode 2 of this video series that is increasing fertilizer applications in crop production. It will be interesting to know that poor solubility of phosphate in soil is one of the major reasons for declining nutrient use efficiency. As a result, deficiency of phosphate severely restricts the growth and yield of crops. Phosphate solubilizing bacteria or, or PSB as they are commonly known are beneficial microbes that secrete certain organic acids such as citric acid, lactic acid, gluconic acid, fumaric acid, succinic acid, and acetic acid that helps to bring down the pH of the soil, thereafter solubilizing insoluble compounds into forms easily available by the crop plants. PSB also secretes certain hormones and enzymes like phytase, nuclease, lecithinase that promotes plant growth and yield. Therefore, application of PSB with phosphatic fertilizer help to supplement nearly 30 kg phosphate per hectare or equivalent and could save up to 50% of chemical fertilizers. As regards application of PSB, it should be applied through seed treatment, soil application or drip method. Doses should strictly be as per the recommendations only. Now the next biofertilizer is potassium related. As you know, Potassium is considered as an essential nutrient and a major constituent within all living cells. And therefore, next to nitrogen, potassium is absorbed in larger amounts by plant than any other element. It will be interesting to know that most of the soils naturally contain potassium in larger amount than any other nutrients. But its availability is restricted as it occurs mostly in insoluble form. Depending on soil types, 90 to 98 percent of soil potassium is unavailable for plant uptake. Commercially available potassium fertilizers are completely soluble in water and contains nutrient in readily available form, but they don't remain soluble for a long time. Potassium mobilizing bacteria, that is KMB, solubilizes potassium minerals, making them easily available for plants. Potassium mobilizing bacteria are usually present in all soils. However, their activities benefiting Soil and plant depends upon their viable cell count per gram of soil. Therefore, to ensure proper functioning, soil needs to be inoculated regularly with good quality potassium biofertilizers. With increase in the population of KMB, that is potassium mobilizing bacteria in the soil, they secretes organic acids like gluconic acid, acetic acid, 2-ketogluconic acid, oxalic acid, succinic acid, etc. Similar to PSB, these acids bring down the pH of the soil and help to mobilize potassium near the plant roots. This improves potassium uptake, protects the plant from salinity injury and also helps the plant against drought. Application of KMB further helps to bring down the cost of cultivation, increase yield and quality of produce like better color, good taste, flavor, longer shelf life, 
even at lower doses of conventional fertilizers. KMB to be applied in the soil or through drip method and doses should strictly be as per the recommendations only. Like nitrogen biofertilizers, specific benefits from use of PSB and KMB has been discussed. However, best results are obtained when all the three biofertilizers that is N, P and K are applied together. This could be done either by applying 250 to 500 ml per acre of individual biofertilizers or application of consortium of microbes that is bio and pk at the rate of one liter per acre. As per our experience of dealing with biofertilizers in different Indian states, the direct benefit using bio and pk is saving of 25% conventional fertilizers without any reduction in yield even from the very first season. If applied, along with the existing fertilizer doses, yield of paddy increases up to 9 quintals per hectare and that of tomato up to 16 quintals per hectare. Some state-wise observations are, in case of paddy, the yield increased over 12% in Punjab, nearly 13% in Uttar Pradesh and nearly 9% in Karnataka. Other benefits observed are early maturity by 2 to 3 days, 10 to 20% increase in the number of tillers and effective tillers and up to 10% increase in the average grain wheat. In case of tomato, in Madhya Pradesh, the yield increased by 7 to 10%, while in Tamil Nadu, it increased over 16%. Other benefits are growth and increase in plant height, increase in the number of flowers and increase in fruit weight. Based on the above, it is strongly suggested to include suitable biofertilizers in the crop cultivation program to bring down our dependence on fertilizers. This will help lower down the cost of cultivation to increase the yield, quality of crop and even farm income. Thanks for watching. Like the video and subscribe the channel. Share with friends and give your feedback so that we can include new topics for further discussions.